Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I've entitled The Christian First Aid Kit, and it's a teaching that Jesus gave His disciples the night before His crucifixion. They were about to enter into the most trying time of their entire life, and in the midst of it, he gave them instructions that had they followed it, they wouldn't have been troubled. They would have been encouraged. They could have actually uh, thrived instead of uh, running away from the Lord during the time, during the crucifixion and the resurrection. I know that the very premise that I'm using for this series is something that a lot of Christians reject. A lot of Christians do not believe that you can walk in victory. They don't believe that you can always be an overcomer. They just believe that it is a series of mountaintops and valleys and that these trials and hurts and pains are God-ordained and that God wants you to suffer and that this is what makes you better. So there's a lot of people that just reject this whole thing. But in John chapter 16, verse 1, and remember, John spoke, Jesus spoke John 14, 15, and 16 as, a, as one teaching. It was a consistent thing. So in the midst of this teaching that he gave his disciples the night before his crucifixion, he said, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. And if you compare this with Mark chapter 4 where Jesus was teaching on the sower sowing the seed, it says that afflictions and persecutions come and people get offended. And so the word is stolen from them. So Jesus was speaking these words to them so that they wouldn't be offended, so that the word would not be stolen from them. The disciples literally, had they taken the instructions of Jesus and, and said, I will not let my heart be troubled. I am going to believe in God. If they had thought about heaven and said, even if it looks terrible here, I know that in my Father's house that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for me and He's going to come again. And if they would have been remembering those things, they could have maintained their faith. They wouldn't have had to enter into this total defeat and depression and despondency and discouragement that they had in between the crucifixion and the resurrection. I know that some people think that is unreasonable. You can't do that. But again, this is what Jesus said. Jesus has given us so much power. The Holy Spirit is with us. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, He comforts us in all of our tribulations so that we'll be able to comfort others. I believe that you can literally win in any situation. It doesn't matter whether a person has died. It doesn't matter whether you are facing death. It doesn't matter if, if it looks like your marriage is falling apart. It doesn't matter if it looks like your finances aren't working. The power and the supply that God has given us is infinitely greater than whatever the tribulation or the trial that has come against us. And I believe that we can conquer and win in every situation. That's what Jesus was teaching His disciples. And if that would work for His disciples, it'll work for us as disciples today. Now, we've got a lot of people that are just converts, and they aren't even making an attempt to be like Jesus. And there's going to be a lot of people that just reject this out of hand and say, I don't even want to hear it. But you know what? If you truly want to be a disciple, a learner, a follower, if you want to be like Jesus, Jesus handled every situation. And he said right here in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus was able to handle everything that came against him. And as believers in the Lord Jesus, who have been God-possessed, by the Spirit of Christ and have been anointed by the Holy Spirit, we can also win in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Again, a lot of people are going to take offense at that. A lot of people are going to say, you're condemning me and you're saying that where I am is not the right place. I don't mean any condemnation, but before we can ever begin to start experiencing the abundant life that the Lord has for us, we've got to believe that it's possible. And there are a lot of people today that have been taught that, no, you cannot win. You cannot succeed. And if you have trial in your life, you are absolutely justified in being depressed and defeated. Matter of fact, there are even some Christians watching this program that would sit there and find offense at me and be angry with me and say that you are... Um, 
condemning people who are depressed. I'm not saying that. I have compassion for you. It's why I'm telling you the truth. But I'm saying that until you raise your sights, until you raise your goal, until you admit that there is victory in Jesus, you're never going to experience it. And just by raising your standards, believing for something else, you run the risk of failure. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. And so if you start hoping for something more than what you've got, you do run a risk of being disappointed, and that makes your heart sick. But if you don't hope for anything, well, then you run the risk of never changing and just living a substandard life. Hope is the first step of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11.1, 1, you've got to start hoping for something different. And so I make no apologies. I believe that Jesus was telling his disciples, you can win. You can be successful. You do not have to run and hide. You do not have to be depressed and defeated during the time in between the crucifixion and the resurrection. Even though you don't understand everything, you can win. And here's how you do it. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Put things into perspective. And then yesterday I was talking out of John 14, verse 4. He says, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas just countered him. He says, you know where I'm going. You know how to get there. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and therefore how could we know how to get there? You know what? When what you are thinking is directly contrary to what God said, you would be well off not to express your doubt and unbelief. It, it's okay. The Lord understands that we are confused and that we have, uh, you know, just all kinds of problems. And, but if you would approach the Lord and say, God, here's what you said. You said, by your stripes I'm healed. But God, I don't feel healed. The doctor says I'm not healed. I don't understand it. Could you explain things? Later in this very chapter, there were twice that Thomas and Philip just countered what Jesus said and said, no, that's not so. And Jesus turned around and in a sense rebuked them and was grieved with their response. But then later, the, uh, it says down here in John chapter 14 in verse 22, it says, Judas said unto him, not Iscariot. There was two Judases that were disciples. There was one who was the traitor, Judas Iscariot. This was another one. It says, Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it? that you will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world. Now see, instead of being like Thomas and Philip, who earlier in this chapter just said, God, you're wrong. We don't know the way. We don't know how to get there. We want to see the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he says, we don't, uh, we hadn't seen the Father. Show us the Father and it'll satisfy us. Instead of just countering and saying, no, what you're saying is untrue. Here's, here's what we've experienced. Judas came along and Judas said, Lord, how is it that this is going to happen? He didn't say, I don't believe that this is so, but he said, Father, how is it so? He asked for explanation and the Lord just calmly responded to him and explained. See, there are times that when the Lord says something, we don't completely grasp it and understand it. That's just a part of being a corrupted, fallen human being. And even though we've been born again, our mind isn't instantly born again and changed. It's got to be renewed. There's a process. And so there are times that the Lord is going to say something that we don't quite understand. And it would be okay to go and say, Lord, here's what you said. You said that we are world overcomers. That if we believe on you, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Father, that's what you said. But I don't feel like a world overcomer. It looks like I'm being overcome. Could you help me? Would you explain this to me? See, if you'd approach the Lord like that, the Lord would be glad to explain things. The Lord will help you. He understands that Scripture says He knows our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. The Lord is compassionate, but that is a totally different approach than just to say, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We can't know the way. We need to be careful that we take God's Word as being absolute and we exalt God's Word and we realize that God never misses it. God never makes a mistake. When he says that you are a victor, when he says that you can overcome the world, when he says by his stripes you were healed, that he's already blessed you with all spiritual blessings, and on and on it goes, God's word is true.
If it doesn't look true in your life, if you can't seem to harmonize your experience with the promise, well, then go to God and say, Lord, teach me and help me to understand. But don't just come out and counter God's Word. Man, that is a powerful statement. There are so many people that honestly what you think, what you feel is more real to you than God's Word. And you are making a serious mistake right there. The Scripture says in Romans chapter 3, verse 4, Yea, let God be true, and every man a liar. That means even yourself, even your own opinion, even your own understanding, even your own feelings. What does God's Word say about you? You know what? You need to get to where you trust, trust God's Word. You exalt God's Word more than you do your own thinking, your own understanding. And I know that there are millions of people watching this program right now that this is just off the wall to you. It's like, how could you be saying these things? I tell you, I have uh, gotten a tremendous amount of satisfaction and peace in my life by just not leaning to my own understanding but acknowledging that God knows more than I do. And I acknowledge God's Word, and I exalt God's Word. I don't do it perfectly, but I mean to, as, uh, to a great degree, and as much as I can, and I'm getting stronger every day, I exalt what God says about me more than what I feel about me. You know, I started out being a complete introvert. I couldn't even look at a person in the face and talk to them. I mean, I was severely handicapped in this area, and God called me to preach His Word called me to stand in front of thousands of people, to preach to millions and millions of people over television. And you know what? In myself, I can't do this. But I reached a place to where God called me. God told me things. God spoke to me out of the first chapter of the book of Jeremiah and said, don't ever say that I'm a child and I can't speak. You will go to nations. You will speak. You will do what I've called you to do. And I took that word from God, and I've exalted this over my own feelings. There are times that I don't want to stand in front of people. There's times that I'd rather pull back and be in the background. My natural feelings haven't just ceased to exist, but I've gotten to where I've put God's word as more important. And I have gone out when I felt like running the other direction and stood up and started speaking, thus saith the Lord, and representing Him, and I have seen God come through thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there are some of you watching this program that you have knowledge of what God's Word says, that by His stripes you were healed. You have knowledge that He's already blessed you and prospered you. Whatever you set your hand unto will prosper. You have knowledge of the Word, how that He will bless you, and you will begin to start being prosperous and seeing things happen. You've got these promises, but you feel something else. Circumstances say something else. And the bottom line is, just like these disciples right here, you know what God's Word says, and yet you say, that's not true. It's not working for me. And the first step towards victory for you is humbling yourself and exalting God's Word, letting God's Word be true, and every man, even your own self, your own self-talk, be a lie. You need to accept God's Word, and you need to start saying about yourself what God's Word says about you. Boy, that's powerful. I know that there are people watching this program that if you would just follow the brief thing that I've said on today's program, this would change your life. But there are many of you saying, well, I know that the Word says this, but it is not true. You are just in direct opposition to the Word. Again, do what Judas did down here in John 14, 22 and say, Lord, how is this true? How is what your Word promises compatible with what I'm experiencing? Lord, teach me. Show me how to make this happen. The Lord understands your frame. He knows that we're but dust. He will be merciful to you, but I guarantee you when you just come out and say, I don't care what your Word says. Here's what my experience says, and I trump everything else with what I feel, with what I see. That's more real to me than your word. That's the very reason that you're having problems. That's what the Bible calls unbelief, and it'll totally negate the power of God. So Jesus said, And whether I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto them, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. They knew Jesus, but they didn't really know Jesus. They didn't have a full revelation of who he was and what he could do. And so when he said, whether I go, you know, and the way you know, they knew Jesus, and Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life, but they didn't realize who Jesus really was. They didn't have a full revelation. Jesus went on to say in John 14, 7, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him. You do know him and have seen him. And look at this in verse 8. This time Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it satisfies us. And he just said in verse 7, that from henceforth you know him, speaking of the Father, and have seen the Father. Jesus said, you have seen the Father. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it'll satisfy us. He just said, you have seen the Father. And they said, well, show us the Father. He just said, you've seen him. I don't know, I don't know how to make this any stronger than what I'm doing. But he said, you have seen. They said, no, we haven't seen. Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. You know, you could turn this verse around and say it this way, that Philip, in a sense, was saying, well, Jesus, you say that if we've seen you, we've seen the Father, but we aren't satisfied with you. We don't think that you are an accurate representation of the Father. If you will show us the Father, if we could see the Father, you know, seated on the throne in heaven, then we would be satisfied, but we aren't satisfied with you. You know, most people, I th I'm sure that if Philip had have said it exactly that way, he would have understood how wrong this is. But basically, that is what he's saying. Jesus just said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he says, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. He wasn't satisfied with Jesus. And likewise, there are people watching this program right now that you know Jesus. You're born again, and yet you aren't satisfied. You're looking for something else. And you're thinking, oh, God, I need an angel. I need a vision. I need a word from you. Would you please speak to me? Would you send somebody across my path that's going to prophesy to me? You know, would you have a donkey come and like Balaam speak out to me and tell me things that I need to know? And we're looking for something else. But brothers and sisters, if you have Jesus, you've got everything that you need. The only problem is you don't fully recognize and appreciate what you have in Jesus. You don't know him. There is a difference between knowing intellectually and knowing with your heart. In the Bible, the scripture says that Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and had a child. And Abraham knew his wife Sarah and she conceived and had a child. In the Bible, the word know is talking about an intimacy, the most intimate relationship that a man and woman can have, the sexual relationship. And when it's talking about knowing God, there is a difference between just knowing him intellectually, knowing about him, and knowing him. There are so many people that come to me at my meetings, and I'm always there an hour early. I'm usually one of the last ones to leave. I talk to a lot of people one-on-one -on -one and deal with them, and the vast majority of the people that come to me they say they know the Lord, but all they do is know about the Lord. There isn't any intimacy. They're panicking. Their emotions are dominating and controlling them. What the doctor has to say, what their mate has to say, what their boss has to say, what the person on news talking about how bad the recession is and everything. This dominates them more than what God has to say. And I mean, I talk to people constantly that the problem is that they just really don't know God. They don't understand the nature of God. They don't know how much God loves them. And so they come to me, and I try and minister to them, and I do the best I can. But you know what? The real problem, the root problem is that they just don't know God. They don't hear the voice of God. All it takes for any person, I don't care how desperate your situation is, is just one little word of encouragement from God. And I guarantee you, it can turn your problem into nothing. I could give you testimony after testimony. I remember one time in our ministry where the finances were just overwhelming us. And um, it's a long story, but I mean, it was just dominating me when I was awake and when I was asleep. 
and I had a dream. And in this dream, uh, the Lord didn't do anything special except that in this dream, I just really saw the Lord. I perceived His love for me. I felt just the love of God. And when I woke up, my problems were still the same. But you know what the difference was? I knew that God loved me. I knew that God cared for me. I was just reminded of those things. And because of it, I went to the exact same office. I faced the exact same problems, but with a totally different attitude. And because of that, it was just a brief period of time until all of those financial pressures were gone and everything was fine. And you know what? Just one word from God, just knowing that He loves me and that He cares for me and that He hasn't deserted me in a situation, it took care of all of my need. Just like these disciples, they didn't know Jesus. They said that they knew Him. They could have told you what he looked like. They could have pointed him out in a crowd. They knew him in an intellectual way. They knew him on the outside, but they didn't really know who Jesus was, and they weren't satisfied with Jesus. I tell you, if you aren't satisfied with Jesus, then you're just hard to be satisfied. There are some of you that are born again. You know for sure that you're born again, and yet you're miserable and discouraged. You know why? Because you're more focused on your problems, and you're dealing with things only from a human, natural standpoint. You're doing it out of your own ability instead of just being in Christ and knowing Him. If you're in a crisis situation like what these disciples were entering into, one of the things you need to do in a crisis situation is realize that, man, I just need to get close to Jesus. I need to draw close. I need to pull back and take my attention off of the things of this world and go to meditating on Him. Actually, we shouldn't ever wait until the crisis hits before we run to the Lord. But if you have a crisis and if you haven't really been seeking the Lord, well, then at least in that situation, you should run to the Lord and you should put Him first in your life. And if you'll do that, I know that many of you right now are in a crisis situation, but if you would just really uh, set aside some time, fast, pray, seek the Lord, get in His presence and just worship Him. It's like the old song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. It's like the 14th chapter of the book of Matthew where Peter walked on the water. As long as he was looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith, he was able to walk on the water. But then he took his eyes off of Jesus. He looked at the wind and the waves, and when he did, he began to sink. You could, you could characterize that in a lot of different ways, but from what we're talking about right here, he just took his eyes off of Jesus. He wasn't focused on him. He wasn't knowing God. He wasn't in communion with God. Instead, he got to looking at just the natural things. And when that happens, you sink. When that happens, the elements begin to start dominating you. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it's as simple as this. You know Jesus, but do you really know him? Are you having intimacy with him? Are you having relationship with him? If you'll do that, whatever your crisis situation is, the Lord will calm that storm. The Lord will help you to walk on top of it. I promise you it'll work. I've got more to share on this, but I'm going to have to stop today. We are going to continue this on our program tomorrow, and I encourage you to listen as our announcer shares with you about how you can get this teaching from our Christian First Aid Kit. Today's complete teaching titled Christian First Aid Kit was recorded live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. This series has over six hours of teaching and is available on either audio CD or DVD. Each is available for 19 pounds. This teaching is also available on DVD as seen on our daily TV program. You can receive it for 19 pounds when you contact us. Or you can get the Christian First Aid Kit as part of the Survival Kit package. In addition to Christian First Aid Kit, this package also includes the Christian Survival Kit, a 16-part series. Together, these two series provide 22 hours of teaching. The entire package has a catalog value of 55 pounds, but today you can get the Survival Kit package for just 50 pounds when you order. The third audio teaching in today's series is available for three pounds when you write or call. 
But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this third CD titled Christian First Aid Kit Part 3, free of charge. I know that the Lord was speaking to many of you today, and I just encourage you that if you are trying to reorient yourself and focus on the Lord, if you recognize and receive this as a message for you, I'd like to encourage you to call that number that you see on your screen and ask one of our prayer ministers just to pray with you. I tell you, there are people that know the Lord, and I believe that a prayer of agreement would do a tremendous thing in your life. So we have that open. There are people there that love you. They are willing and ready to pray with you. So call that number and receive the materials, but also ask someone just to pray with you and help you to get your heart focused on the Lord. We'd like to remind you that we're offering Andrew's latest book titled Effortless Change for £8.50. Contact us today to get your copy. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Or you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. I had been looking for the more in my life and someone had given me a teaching tape of Andrews and um, had shared another church with me who was also a Karis Bible College uh, affiliate up in Fort Collins. Um, so I began to listen to Andrew's tapes and seeing that Andrew had the more, was teaching the more that Jesus said we would be doing the greater, raising the dead, healing the sick, opening blind eyes. So I began to listen to Andrew's tapes and then I was diagnosed with cancer. So I got every tape that I could and it was just feeding my belief and starving my unbelief with the Word of God, with Andrew's teachings. He prayed for me just a simple prayer, um, commanding the cancer to leave my body. I went in for the surgery. Um, I was probably about a week and a half, two weeks later. Uh, the doctors called me the very next day, which is unusual, and said, Connie, we don't know what happened. All the cancer was gone. Um, of course, my husband and I rejoiced, and I said, I know what happened. <laughs> cancer was the big sickness that came upon me, but not bigger than a cold for me anymore. Have you ever wanted to check out back issues of Gospel Truth Magazine from Andrew Womack Ministries? They're available online at awmi.net. Just log on to our website, look to the left, and click on Extras. Then look to the left again and click on Online Magazines. Once you're there, you're free to browse through our selection of Gospel Truth magazines from years past. Check out some great articles, and be sure and check out the current issue while you're at it. Gospel Truth Magazine, now available online at awmi.net.